Now we've got to solve this equation then, 7 cos x minus 24 sine x equals 10. For x between 0 and 2 pi radians, we're allowed to equal 0 radians here, but must be less than 2 pi radians. So to do this kind of thing, when you're solving a trigonometric equation, see if you can make sure that you get into the same trigonometric function. And we can do this quite easily through the earlier part because we saw that this was exactly the same as 25 cos x plus 1.287 radians. So what I'm going to do is replace this with the 25 cos x plus 1.287 and what that's doing for me it's allowing me to write this equation in one trig function cosine okay and the other thing what I'm going to do is not take this value because that's the rounded up version I'm going to take the unrounded version that we worked out earlier for uh, this angle alpha it was 1.287 0, 0, 2 say and so on. Okay, that's plenty of uh, places there. Okay, and this equals 10. So now that I've got this, what I need to do is get rid of the 25. So I divide both sides by 25 and therefore I'm going to have the cosine of x plus 1.287, 0, 0, 2 and so on is equal to 10 25ths. And at this point I now want to remove the cosine so I'm going to take the inverse cos to both sides. So if I do that I'm going to be left with x plus 1.287 0, 0, 2 and so on equals the inverse cos of 10 over 25. Now when you get to this point uh, you can either draw a graph of this particular uh, function, but I wouldn't really do that myself. I find it um, takes too long. So what I always do is the quadrant method. And uh, if you've been watching my videos and previous questions on this, you should be by now be familiar with the quadrant method. The cosine is positive here. We're, 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 we've got 10 25ths, which is positive value. So when we draw the quadrants, okay, let's just put them up here. Remember that we start here at zero radians or zero degrees if it's in degrees, but it's in radians, zero radians. Going round anti-clockwise, this is pi upon two radians, pi upon pi radians, three pi upon two radians, and this would be two pi radians back here. So we want to know where cosine is positive and it's positive if you remember the rule all sine tan cos okay cosine is positive in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant so what I would do is draw a line out there in the first quadrant mark that angle in to the horizontal and draw another line equally inclined to the horizontal as that one okay always do that mark that angle in then we mark in the angles that we require. We're going between 0 and 2 pi, so we've got to turn in an anti-clockwise direction. So starting from here, always start from the zero here, we turn first of all to the first blue line, that one there. And this I would encourage you to mark in is the angle x plus 1.28702 and so on. Because I haven't got much room, I'm just going to write x plus 1.2 and so on. Okay, but I'm really using this number here. That's one solution. We go back to the beginning here and we now go in anti-clockwise direction all the way around till we hit the blue line again. That's this one here. And this is another answer. It's another x plus 1.2 and so on. Okay. Now we get on our calculators, make sure you're in radians mode, okay? Take the inverse cos of 10 25ths and what you should find that you get is your principal value as we call it will be 1.15927 and so on, okay? Make sure you've drawn your quadrant diagram at this stage. 
And so what we've got here represents this little blue angle in here, which is exactly the same as this red one. So let's just mark in that that little blue one, okay, is 1.15 radians. In fact, I haven't got much room to do that, but the point is it's exactly the same size as this one here. This angle in here is also 1.15 and so on. Okay, we'll just leave the rest of that off. 1.15 radians. And that helps us to get this green one. Another solution. Because to go all the way around is 2 pi radians, but to go just this far must be 2 pi minus this number here. So if you do that, okay, what you should find that you get on your calculator, if you do 2 pi then minus that is 5.12390 and so on. Okay, let's just remove that T there, okay? We'll move, remove all of that now, okay? We should know that. And does it stop here? No, it doesn't, okay? Now I know it says between 0 and 2 pi, but we've got to still be very careful because in a moment we're going to be subtracting this value 1.28 and so on away from each of these values. And can you see that when we subtract 1.287 from this value, because it's greater than this, we're going to end up with a negative value outside the range for x. So we don't really want this value now, okay? But if we were to go round again, starting from here, okay, we've gone round 2 pi and then carry on to this blue line again. I'll even mark it in red. We'll do it as a dotted line. This is a possible solution all the way round here, okay. That's 2 pi and then turn on to that blue line there. So if we were to add 2 pi to this value, even though our solution is out of range at the moment, you'll see that it will pull back into range. Add 2 pi to 1.15 and you see that you'll get this value 7.44246 and so on. Now when we end up taking 1.28 from each of these values, you'll find that you'll be in the range 0 to 2 pi. Let's just do it. X equals, okay? Take 1.28 from this value and you should find you now get 3.8369 and so on. Take 1.28 odd from this value and you should find now you get 6.1554 and so on. These values then are between 0 and 2 pi. X is between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so you must remember that part there. Well, we have to give our answers to two decimal places. So at the end of the day, X is going to equal 3.84 and it's also going to be 6.16. .6. And they're in radians, so I'll just put rads there, okay? And I'll say both to two decimal places, 2dp. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then how to do this question and also similar questions to this.